Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how to get started with the free Gravity Forms Event Field plugin. So this is a completely free add-on that we offer on our website. If you don't have it yet, you can head over to our site, go to the products page, and find Gravity Forms Event Field, and then you can download it absolutely free. So if you're already a Gravity Kit uh, customer, if you're using um, some of our other add-ons, you can actually install the event field from your WordPress dashboard. So to do that, just hover over Gravity Kit and click Manage Your Kit. Then you can scroll down to where it says Free. Here are all of our free plugins. And here is the Gravity Forms event field. And just click Install. Okay, so now the Gravity Forms event field has been installed and activated. Uh, let's go through an example of how to use this new field type in your forms. So let's create a new form. I'm going to start with a blank form. Okay, so here I am in the Gravity Forms editor. And let's say we're building a new form to add events to our website. So Let's start first with a single line text field, and that can be the event title. And now we're going to add the new event field to our form. So we can scroll down to advanced fields, and here is the event field. So the whole point of this field is to make it easier for you to create events in Gravity Forms. Um, events are usually made up of a number of different uh, bits of data, like the start date, the end date, the start time, end time, time zone. And we've just simplified the whole thing by bundling all of those inputs into a single field type. So as you can see, all of the different inputs are here. And there are also some uh, really nice options in the field settings. So if we click on the event field here, there are a number of options for us to configure. And the first one is actually the ability to create repeating events. So if I enable this here, you'll see that the event field inputs change slightly. And um, we've got three extra inputs here. So this will actually allow us to configure the repeating events uh, when we create them. And I'll show you how that works on the front end in just a moment. Okay, so if we scroll down in the field settings here, as you can see, we also have the ability to change the labels for the input fields here. So we can alter those if we want to. And you can also turn off some of these inputs. For example, if you don't want the option to set an all day event, you can just turn that field off. And same with these time zone and show as. The show as field allows you to set a status for that event. And I'll show you how that works in just a bit. So scrolling down further, we have the date format. So this drop down just allows you to select the format uh, of the date that's being entered in there. Okay, great. And then there's one option I miss up here, which is the option to show a calendar icon next to the date fields. And you can also input your own custom icon if you want to. This doesn't change the functionality of the field, but it's a nice little aesthetic uh, change. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave repeating events enabled, and I'm gonna save the form, and then I'll embed it on a page, and we can see what that looks like on the front end. Okay, so here I am on a page, I've got my form here. I'm going to go ahead and publish the page. And let's view page. Okay, so here is my events form on the front end. And as you can see, the events field um, has a number of inputs uh, for start date, end date. Um, we can choose a start time and end time. We can also just uh, select all day event, and that will remove those fields. And then we can set the repeat frequency here. Um, so let's go ahead and fill in these fields. Yep, 
Okay, so for the repeat frequency, we have the option to select uh, every day, every week, every month, or every year. So for this example, let's choose every week. Um, then we can select the status of the event. So will it show up as free or busy? And then uh, finally, we can choose when the repeating event should end. So for example, if the if it should stop repeating on a certain date or after a certain number of occurrences. And in this case, let's select on date and we'll choose the date of March 1st, 2024. Okay, and finally we'll give our event a title and let's submit it. Okay, so here I am on the entries page. Here is the event I submitted. Let's view it. Great, and as you can see, we've got the event title and then under the event uh, label, we've actually got all of the event information, uh, which is collected through our event field. So the next thing I wanna show you is how to display these events on a calendar. And you can do this using our Gravity Calendar add-on. So if you don't know about Gravity Calendar, it's a really powerful add-on for Gravity Forms that allows you to display your entry data on a calendar that you can customize. So this is Gravity Calendar. Um, there'll be more information about it in the video description. Okay, but for now, let's head back to the Entries page and we'll click Create a Calendar. So here is the calendar feed where we can uh, configure our calendar. Um, we have a separate video about getting started with Gravity Calendar, so I'm not gonna go into details here, uh, but I'm gonna quickly configure this feed now. So as you can see, there's really a lot of options um, when configuring your calendar, and you can really customize things uh, depending on how you want it to look. Okay, great, so my calendar feed has been configured. Now I'm gonna go ahead and embed this on a page and we'll see what that looks like on the front end. Okay, so I've embedded my calendar using the Gravity Calendar block. Let me go ahead and publish the page and view page. Okay, so here's our calendar. And if we go over to January 1st, you can see here is our event. And as you can see, it's repeating every week, just like we set it to. So that's perfect. And if we head over to March 2024, you can see that's where it actually um, ends. So it repeats up until the end of February, and then it doesn't repeat anymore. Okay, so thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in the event field, go ahead and download it for free and let us know what you think. Um, and if you want to take things further and actually display a customizable dynamic calendar on your website, check out our add-on Gravity Calendar, and the details for that will be in the video description.